The Meta Business Suite is a fantastic all-in-one tool that you can use to manage your Facebook and Instagram marketing and advertising activities in one place. In today's video, we are going to start our Meta Business Suite tutorial series in 2023. Hey everyone, it's Stuart here. And one of the most frequently asked questions we get is how you can connect your Instagram account to Facebook using the Meta Business Suite. We're going to show you how to do that today. Now, just before we get going with today's tutorial video, consider subscribing if you are new to the channel. And don't forget to tap that bell icon to receive all the Facebook and Instagram tutorials and tips from this channel. And with that out the way, let's get into it. Right, so here we are on the home page of the Meta Business Suite. And you can see up at the top, we have only got the Facebook page currently connected to the Meta Business Suite. In order to connect your Instagram account, we need to navigate over to the left-hand section menu bar and select All Tools. This will then open up the place where we can then access the page settings over on the right-hand side underneath the Manage section. Click on Page Settings, and this is then going to take you through to your Facebook page settings and allow you to link your Instagram account with Facebook. Head over to the left hand settings menu bar and scroll down until you see linked accounts. Click on linked accounts, which is then going to open up the Instagram section and allow you to connect your account. Let's select connect account right now. And this will then open up the Instagram icon. Yes, we do want to connect. So let's click on that blue button there. And this is then going to allow you to choose a couple of things such as allowing Instagram to access your inbox. We want to confirm that, yes. And then you will then be directed through to the login page of Instagram. Right, let's go ahead and log in. You will then get the chance to select continue as your selected page we want to click on that and once that goes through and is processed and you are logged into your instagram account we can then go back to facebook and see that yes indeed the instagram account has been connected after that we go to the meta business suite homepage, we exit out and then we just hit the refresh button to make sure that the instagram account is indeed connected and voila you can see now that there is the Facebook page and the Instagram page that are connected to the Meta Business Suite. You can now do all of your Facebook and Instagram marketing activities here in the Meta Business Suite. And in today's video, showing you how to navigate and use the homepage of the Meta Business Suite. So here we are on the home page of the Meta Business Suite in 2023 and there have been a couple of changes you need to be aware of in order to successfully navigate and use the home page successfully. Firstly, you need to understand what profiles you have connected to your Meta Business Suite. And if I zoom in just a little bit, I can see two circles with a Facebook and Instagram icon next to it. This shows that I have successfully connected my Facebook page and Instagram profile to the Meta Business Suite. And if you just see one icon here with the Facebook logo, you can always go and connect your Instagram account with relative ease. And I will include a link to, on how to do that in the description box below. Let's zoom out just a little bit more and come to the section right underneath it. You can see that there is a create post, a create ad, and a more section. If I open up the more section, you will see that there are multiple options you can choose from right over here. Now, the important thing to mention is that Meta or Facebook is slowly rolling out some of these features in different business suites. So you may not be able to see all of these features right over here, but you may have a couple that you can use at a particular point in time. Just be a little patient. 
you will eventually be able to see all of these things once you have got an older Facebook page or over time once Meta has rolled out these features across all the platforms. So this is a great way for you to create content and to also upload multiple videos at one time, post a video across pages, going live, creating a story, a reel, creating a post that goes to your Instagram or Facebook page, or creating an ad for your page as well, which is really a boosted post. If we scroll over and out, you can see that there is a new little uh, slider feature right over here, which shows you in real time some interesting information that you can see for your Facebook and Instagram page. If we look at the different ones here, you can see that there is messages um, received, there is your audience size for Facebook and Instagram, there is trends, which is how many people your page has reached in the last 28 days, and this goes revolving around in an ongoing pattern. If you are pressed for time as a marketer or a small business owner, it's a great quick way to see what sort of information and what sort of influence your page is having. And it allows you to quickly identify uh, what trends may be important to you and how you can look at reaching a wider audience. If we scroll out again, we then come down to the next section, which is your little to-do list. And this is basically the tasks which you have set for yourself here in the Meta Business Suite. And don't worry, we will do a tutorial showing you how to create a to-do list later on in this series. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get that particular tutorial. As we scroll down, you can see that there is a section called Manage Your Marketing Content. And if we zoom in just a little bit more, you will see that there are four tabs over here which allow you to see different things. Firstly, with the planner. What the planner does is it allows you to see the posts for this week that have either just been published or are set to be published if it is after the blue um, highlighted day up at the top. And coming across to the right hand section, you can also right here schedule a post or if we use the drop down button here, schedule a story. If we go over to the next tab for posts, you can see the recent posts that have gone onto your Facebook and Instagram profile and pages. Scrolling over to stories, it is the same thing as well. You can see the recent stories that you have shared across Facebook and across Instagram. And the great tool here is simply being able to click create story for either Facebook or Instagram. So if you can't yet see the create a story feature here, if we go down to the manager marketing content, you may be able to see it over here. And then finally, there is the ad section. So if you are creating ads in the Meta Business Suite, you can see some of the recent campaigns that have run, or if you want to create a new one, we simply click on create new ad and follow the process. As we scroll down here, you can look at the explore more ways to grow section and Facebook or Meta will sometimes provide updates to the self-serve ads and other policies that they have recently done. I would advise you read the terms and see what your business is signing up for. But as we go down to the next section here, you can see that there's a cool little section called grow your audience. And you can do this by contacting your existing network or contacting new people who have engaged with your Facebook or Instagram page in some shape or form. We just need to click on the buttons here and then follow the process to invite them to come and like our page. It's quite a cool little feature, particularly if you are just getting started out on Facebook or Instagram and want to build and grow your audience. As we scroll down even further, 
we can see the section of what's new in the Meta business. It will show you what the updated features are in the Meta business suite and also what you need to do in order to get the most out of the experience. Just click on the see more button and you'll be directed to a section which shows you some of the latest updates here in the Meta business suite. Now, there are some other fantastic tools that you can access from the Meta Business Suite homepage that will allow you to successfully undertake your marketing and advertising activities for Facebook and Instagram. If we head over to the menu section on the left hand side, you can see that there are a range of different tools that you can access. Firstly, there is notifications for your Facebook and Instagram accounts. There is the inbox section, which allows you to check, respond, and engage with the messages that are sent to your Facebook and Instagram profiles. There is the planner section for creating content for your pages. There is the ads manager that will open in a new tab and allow you to create Facebook ads. Now, this is not to be mistaken with the create ad section here. This ads manager is a bit more advanced and I'll include a link in the description box below on how to create a Facebook ad for your business using this ads manager. If we scroll down, we can see an extension of the rotating slider here, which is the insight section. And this provides a good overview of the analytics of your pages. If we come down to ads reporting and events manager, you can then have a look at the feedback, a number of clicks, the reach, impressions, conversions, leads that your ads have produced here in ads reporting. And of course, um, events manager, this is basically the events that you have set up on your pixel. And once again, I'll include a link in the description box below explaining what a pixel is and also a video for event tracking as well, so that these are not confusing terms to you if you are new to the Facebook and Instagram advertising platform. Obviously, there's a lot of other tools that can be accessed as well. And all we need to do is navigate to the bottom where we see the all tools title next to the hamburger bar. And we just want to click on that which is then going to open up a menu with everything that you currently have access to in your Meta Business Suite. Now, just a quick disclaimer, my page is a couple of years old and I have been on both platforms for quite a while. So my level of access is a lot higher. If you don't see all of these features yet, don't worry. Facebook or Meta is slowly rolling out all of these features. So in time, you will have access to most of these things. If we have a quick look here, you can see that there is a section uh, for additional tools, such as accessing the business apps, uh, file manager, where you can manage and upload multiple files at one time. There is the ads section, there is the insights section, there is the ability to manage orders and payouts, there is the services section, the instant form section, where you can download the leads um, that your ads have produced. So it is quite a handy place to go if you are a bit unsure about what you need um, access to and how to get it. So let's type in an example up at the top here. Let's say I want to access ads. I just type it in at the top and it will then show up all of the things related to ads. If we want to change to apps, for example, it will then show us all the different uh, features over here. Perhaps the most important uh, access point here is the settings button. So this allows you to go and manage your Meta Business account. It allows you to manage the uh, pages and who has access to them. So quite an important tool to have access to. And finally, it, just exiting out of here, We've also got the settings button too. So if you are a Facebook page admin or an Instagram page admin, 
you'll have access to the settings button here and this will allow you to have a look at all of the assets that you have access to within the Meta Business Suite. And in today's video, we are going to have a look at the to-do list in the Meta Business Suite, what it comprises of and how you can take action to make sure that to-do list items are ticked off. A big powerful shout out to Dan Hoff Allo for allowing us to use their Meta Business Suite to film today's tutorial video. So here we are on the home page of the Meta Business Suite. And if we scroll down, we will see the to-do list. And basically what this is, is a place where you can see the draft posts that you have created for your business for Facebook and Instagram, where you have unread messages and also comments and other engagements on your Facebook and Instagram posts that you haven't yet responded to. And if we navigate over to the drop down button on the side and expand it out, this will then allow you to see all of the draft posts, messages, comments, and other things that may require your attention. And in order to tick those things off, we just need to hover our mouse over on the particular item and then scroll over to the right hand side until we see the three dots here. We want to click on those three dots and that will then allow us to take a particular action. So let's have a look at this post here and let's select schedule. So what we are now going to do is we're going to schedule this post for Saturday the 18th of February and we're going to schedule it for three o'clock because we are happy with that and then select schedule. What that is then going to do is it will remove the post from your to-do list and you will now see that this section is empty although you can always start a new draft post from scratch. If we come back to the next section, you can then see an unread message which has been sent to the Danhoff Aloe Vera product page. And if we click on it, it will then take us to the messages section where we can then reply to the message of anyone who engages with our Facebook and Instagram page via Messenger. So let's respond to this one right now. Excellent, we have just done that. We can then navigate back to the home page. And you can then see that there is lastly a comment that hasn't yet been responded to. Let's go to that particular comment and simply click on it until we get taken to the comments section. All we need to do now is simply respond to the comment that was left right over here and enter our response, press enter and congratulations, that response is done. Navigating back to the home page, you will now see that the to-do list is up to date and all the tasks that required your attention have now been completed. Big thank you to Dan Hoff Allo. You can get 10% off if you go and join their mailing list. Their website is www.danhoffallo.com. Hey everyone, it's Stuart here. And in today's video, we are going to show you how to find your page notifications in the Meta Business Suite. So here we are on the home page of the Meta Business Suite. And in order to access your page notifications, we just need to scroll over to the left hand menu bar until we find notifications. We want to click the notifications button until we see the pop out with all of the notifications that we have for our Facebook and Instagram pages. Now, there is a cool little feature that you can use to edit the notifications based on the action that was taken. So if we go up, and let me just zoom in so you can see it. Let's go up to the top section here, and you have got filters 
that you can use to edit out the different notifications. So if you only want to get the notifications for comments that people have made on your posts, you can get that action. If you want to get message reminder notifications and see those, you can get those too. If you only want to get notifications for say Facebook, that is possible as well. And you can see now that I've only got notifications for my Facebook page and not for Instagram. Quite a cool little feature. And if you are someone that sees so many notifications in any one day, you can always go to the section right next to it, which is the open letter and just select mark all as read. And that is then going to clear out all of the notifications. So congratulations, everybody. You now know how to find your notifications and filter them in the Meta Business Suite. Once again, if you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing if you are new to the channel and want ongoing Facebook and Instagram marketing tutorials and tips. Hello everybody, Stuart McAdam here and there's been a question that's come in from one of you about can you create reels from the Meta Business Suite? The answer to that is yes you can. In order to do that, you just need to navigate over to the more section on the home page and click on the drop down button. That will then allow you to create a reel. Now, if you can't see that on your Meta Business Suite homepage, just navigate over to the planner section, click on that, and that will then bring up the schedule a post story or ad, select the drop down ones, and we want to select create a reel, and we'll click on that. And as this loads up, don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button for support. Now, coming over to the creation of the reel, we just want to add the content in here. And I'm just going to pull out an example video. Let's select uh, this one right over here. And you can see here that that begins um, the video rolling straight away as soon as it's uploaded. We want to see something like that, like awesome uh, video. That will be your little real detail down below. Now, in order to go to the next stage with uh, trimming and adjusting the video uh, length, we just want to select the next button down at the bottom. And that will then allow us to select the um, the size of the video, like sort of what format we want it in, whether it's the original or the 916, that's entirely up to you. We want to select the trim button to reduce it in size. So let's pull this back from the current length of 17 seconds and let's just say um, we want to have it at, let's say, eight seconds. And then after the, we've selected the time we want, we just select apply. And then what that's going to do is we'll just play the video again. It'll allow the video to only run for the time which we have selected in the particular cut. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the pause button there and we're going to move to next. And you get to the final option here just before being able to share it which allows you to add in uh, some uh, remixing. We don't want to focus on that today. Um, and if you don't want that in your reel, just select the off button altogether and exit out. And you can then go down to the bottom and select share. And as soon as this finishes loading, congratulations, you've just created a reel out of the Meta Business Suite. It's quite easy and user friendly and it's very simple to find um, now that you know where it is. So don't forget once again to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you are new. And we'll see you in the next tutorial video. Bye for now. In today's video, we're continuing our Meta Business Suite tutorial series showing you how to create posts inside of the Meta Business Suite. So here we are on the home page of the Meta Business Suite. And in order to get started with creating your first post, 
we want to navigate down to the blue button right underneath the icons and select create post. This is then going to take us to the composer section of the Meta Business Suite. You may have noticed this outlay has changed a little bit in the last nine months. In order to get started with creating your first post, we simply want to check a couple of things off. Number one, we want to identify where this post is going to go. To do that, we just need to select the drop down button here next to post two. Click on that, and that will then open up the different places you can put your post. In this example, I want it to go to Facebook and I want it to go to Instagram. So if the Instagram is not selected, just tick that. And if you just want it to go to one or the other, you simply uncheck the other one. Coming back to this example, we wanted to go to both. We just want to exit out of this now. So we will click on the drop down button again. And then we will come to the media section, which is where you can add your photo or video from your computer. So let's find an example photo to add in. And here we go. We have found the photo that we want to use for the Meta Business Suite post. And then we want to go down to the next section, which is post details. This is where we will add in the text for our post. And you can see that we have now successfully added some text in. And what you will notice on the right hand side is that there is an Instagram feed preview of what the post will look like. If we go up to the top and click on the drop down section, we can change that to Facebook newsfeed preview to have a look at what that will look like. And the great thing about this is you can preview it on your desktop, which is the left hand icon over here. And we can also preview it on mobile as well. So you can see how the preview will look on both desktop and mobile, which is really important, particularly if you have a particular image crop that you want Facebook and Instagram to use successfully and fit within the image specs. As we come down, you can see that there are a range of different buttons here. There are also hashtag and smiley face options, and we're going to show you how each one works. So let's say we want to add, for example, a hashtag. We can just search for one, and let's see if we can find one that matches our current niche. Marketing, yes we can. What we will then do is just add that hashtag into the post, and you will see it automatically comes up right over here. If we go to the smiley face section, you can see that we have got a range of different um, emojis and graphics that can be used in the particular post. Let's see if we can add a smiley face. Here we go. We've just added a smiley face in. A cool little feature to add, especially if you want to make your post stand out a little bit more. If you want to add your location, so for example, you are a location specific business, like a cafe or a plumbing and electrical business, you can always add the location in which you've done a particular job or done something awesome to gain some credibility with people in the local area. Coming across to the next section, we have got the get message option. And in this example, again, we will have to remove the Instagram placement to show you how to use this option. So let's select get messages. And what that is then going to do, as you can see on the preview, it's loading up at the moment. But once it has finished loading, you will then see a call to action button, send message underneath that. And that highlights the uh, post information a little bit more. Let's remove that example now. 
we can then add in a link and the important thing to remember for the link is that it's only going to work on Facebook. For Instagram, all you will see is the link text, but you won't be able to click through on that. Type in an example URL. And here we go. We have just typed in an example URL. Let's have a preview look at what it will look like on mobile. And here you go. The link is in blue showing that it is now clickable as a link finally there is the scheduling option down at the bottom of the page this will allow you to decide whether you want to publish the post immediately or whether you want to schedule it or save it as a draft if you want to publish the post immediately you simply select the publish button down below at the bottom and just hit publish if you would like to schedule the post, simply select the schedule button in the middle and select the date and time you would like the post to go up. If you want to change the dates which are seen right now, simply click on the calendar button and this will then bring up the calendar so you can choose the day in which you want the post to go live. We can do the same thing as well for Instagram and then we can also adjust and edit the time based on our preference for the post to go up so let's enter a new time for the post to go up right here there we go if you just want to save it as a draft you just select save as draft until it comes up gray and then you select the save button down the bottom in this example we want to publish it right now so let's hit the publish button right away and congratulations, your post is now live. You can see the day in which it was published, which is today in this example, as well as the time each post was published, in addition to which platforms the post went live on. So here you can see Facebook and Instagram, which is fantastic. <music>
In this video, we are going to show you how to take your video thumbnail from this to this. Obviously, one of the most important things you can gain from your audience is their attention. And having a good thumbnail is the key to doing it successfully on Facebook and Instagram. Hey everybody, Stuart here. Welcome to today's video. Super excited to be walking you through the simple process to having a more engaging thumbnail. Just before we get started though, don't forget to hit that like button down below. And if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to tap that bell icon. Let's get into it. We want to go over to the left hand section here and make sure we choose the places we want the video to appear first. Once that's been done, upload the video and then scroll down to the thumbnail section. You want to look at the options you have available. You can choose from the suggested ones in your video, but my recommendation is to upload your own image. Let's go to upload image and go over to the right hand section and click on the blue text for upload image right over here. This is then going to allow you to choose the image you want to show up as your thumbnail on organic Facebook and Instagram placements. Let's click on it. And once that uploads, this is then going to be the image you will see now on your post, the one that you have just uploaded. After that, all you need to do is follow the processes to upload the post and voila, you will have a beautiful new thumbnail that is far more likely to attract people's attention and engage them in your particular post. Either. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. And if you want ongoing tutorials like this, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. In today's video, we are going to show you the simple steps you can follow to create your very first Facebook or Instagram story in the Meta Business Suite. Okay, so now that you've got the best image aspect ratio recommendation, we can head over to creating the first story for you for Facebook and Instagram. Simply head over to the top section of the Meta Business Suite until you see the More button. Click on it until you see Create Story come up. Then click on that and that is then going to open up a little pop-up for you to get started with creating your story. You can select whether you want it on Facebook, Instagram or both. In this example, let's select both of them and then head over to the next section, which is adding media to your story. Click on add media and find the image in the right aspect ratio that you want to upload. Let's select the example right at the top. As the image begins to upload, you will then see a few new sections appear down at the bottom for the creative tools. As you can see here, we have got our image aspect ratio and we can see a preview of what it looks like at the moment on Facebook and Instagram. Let's say we want to crop that image a little bit more. Let's head into the crop section right here and you can then select the crop that you want for your particular image. You can go for the original one, you can go for the square one, or the full screen vertical. Obviously, this is the recommended one, so we are going to go with full screen vertical 9 to 16 aspect ratio. We then want to head over to the apply section right down at the bottom there to make sure that this change happens. And once this change has happened, you can then see the new preview of what it will look like. Here it looks quite nice, so let's move on to the next section, which is adding text to the story. And in this example, let's add a nice simple caption. We first want to go over to the add text section, and we then want to click on it. 
This is then going to open up a little square and we can move this to wherever we want to have the text on the story. So let's move it to the middle and then click twice until we see this appear and then start typing. And there we go. Let's zoom out and show you what you can do by changing the text color. Let's say we want to make the text blue. Let's say we want to make it yellow. Let's say we want to make it white. There we go. That looks quite nice. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, we simply select this little blue button there and we hold the mouse down and pull it up or down depending on what size we want the font to be. If you think this current font is not quite reflective of your brand, you can always go to the font section and select a new font type. Let's say we want to go with Courier. There we go, and that looks quite nice. Then select Apply, and once they are done, you can then see the preview of what this is going to look like. As you can see here, it's a bit hard to read this text at the moment. So let's go back and change the font color. Here we go, in green. Let's select Apply, and we will successfully have a font that we can read and an image that is the 9 to 16 vertical ratio, which is quite cool to have. There you go, the road ahead is exciting. The, another thing is having stickers. So this allows you to choose a couple of cool different stickers that you can place on to your story. Let's select the smiley face emoji and once again, you can see that there's the blue button to pull it up and down for size. And you can also just hold your mouse down and move it around to where you want it on the story. Then you can select apply. And again, it's just going to update the image once again. This may seem like a bit of a process, but it's really important to make sure that your story is 100% good and you are happy with it before hitting that publish button. Now, the final thing is that you can add a swipe up link into your story. And all you need to do is enter the website link in the story and just wait until the loading preview section is done. And what you will see afterwards is the see more button down at the bottom will now appear. And you can visit the link to make sure that it is actually working properly and the way you intended it to. It's looking fine here, so that's great. Let's head back to the story setup. Now we can see a final preview in Facebook and Instagram of what our story will look like. So once that is done, we can either select share story or you can schedule it for a later date. In this example, we want to get this story up straight away. So let's select share story. And congratulations, the story has now been published. It may take a few minutes for the story to appear in your planner section here in the Meta Business Suite. It's also important to remember that stories are only going to be visible for 24 hours. Hello everybody, Stuart McAdam here and in today's video we are going to show you how to go live on Facebook from the Meta Business Suite. Just before we do though, don't forget to hit that like button down below for support and consider subscribing to the channel if you are new here. Let's get into it. The first place we want to go to is the home page of the Meta Business Suite. We want to look for the more button and we want to click on it. This will then bring up a couple of different options for us to choose from. We want to go down to the go live option and click on it. And once we have done that, we are going to be then taken to the studio section where we can start setting up our live stream. The first option we want to choose is just going live straight away. So let's go to the go live section and click on select. 
What we're then going to be doing is setting up the basic fundamentals of going live here on Facebook. And there are a couple of interesting things that you need to remember. The first one is adding in the post details. So you can see in the top right hand section here that there are two things that you need to add in. One, a title, which is what your video is all about. And a quick description to outline what the video is going to be covering. And you can see here, we've now got a title and we've also got a description as well. Let's hit the save button and move on to the next section, which is the video source. Now, there are two options here. Once again, if you have streaming software, you can select this option that allows you to connect StreamYard or whatever other software you have connected to go live on Facebook, or you can select the simple option, which is the webcam on your computer. That is the option that we are going to go with today. We then come down to the camera controls, which allows you to select what camera you have, if there is more than one option, and also the audio option too. And you can see here, we have got the microphone connected in here, which is great. We can then see a preview of what our live stream is going to look like today with the video section here. And hello everyone, this is me talking into the mic. And on to the left hand side, we can see a couple of other things. These don't matter if you are just wanting to go live on your very first video, but let's show you what they are anyway. We have the settings button, which allows you to have a look at the viewer section, and it allows you to allow enable um, viewers to rewind and to message you if you want. You can see the comments section, which enables you to choose who can comment on the live stream, the interactivity, which is the polls, questions, graphics, the distribution, and if you are monetized, your ability to earn uh, from that particular live stream. But we're going to go back to the stream setup and we are happy with everything over here. So once all of this is set and done, we simply select on the go live button and that is slowly going to let our stream start. And you'll be able to tell that it is live as soon as you see the live button in the top left hand corner. We're going to come and end the live video now. And this allows you to end the broadcast altogether and we want to select end. Make sure you've clicked that and that will then end the live broadcast for you on your Facebook page. So there you have it, a nice, simple and easy walkthrough on how to go live on your Facebook page through the Meta Business Suite. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day. See you later. showing you some of the additional features and tools that are available in the inbox section so that you can get the most out of the platform. Here we are in the inbox section of the Meta Business Suite. And let's start from top to bottom so you can see all the tools and features that are available for you to respond to messages and do the other things which Facebook has enabled you to do here in the Meta Business Suite. Firstly, there is a search bar so you can always go and find people who may have messaged your page, but you don't want to filter through the many messages you've got. You want to get to their message straight away. You can then select that person's name and that conversation is then going to appear here on the right hand section. So it's nice and easy to find exactly what you are looking for. If we exit out of that and come back to the sections underneath it, you can see that there are three different buttons that you can click on. The first one is the unread button. So if you have any messages that have not yet been read and you need to respond to them, you can filter them out simply by selecting the unread button. That is then going to bring up all of the unread messages that have appeared so far. And you can see one has already appeared on the right hand section here with others that may show up 
underneath it. You can also filter messages by important. And if we select the important button, you'll then see that we have selected an example message here as important. And that will then display on the right hand side, along with all of the other important messages that you have selected to filter. And the way in which you filter important messages is simply going over to the buttons on the right hand side above the message and then just select click to teach that this conversation is important. Now, if we go to labels, this shows up some of the responses people have done on various ads. So let's select the messenger ads that people have responded to. And let's scroll down and click on one example. Now, if someone is responding to the ad, we obviously want to mark that as important because this is someone that may be interested in our particular product or service. So let's mark another one as important. And if we come back here, you can then see that the important messages are now beginning to, to display. And what this is teaching the inbox section of the Meta Business Suite is that people who respond to our messages have got something important to say. So we can now identify these people as important. Coming over to the next section, which is the drop down, you can also filter based on various things, whether a message has been marked as done, which in this case, you just need to go down to one of the examples and select the green tick button until it highlights and click move to done. And if you select the done one, you can see all the messages that have been clicked as done like that. You can go to uh, the follow up section. You can select the important messages, messages that have been marked as spam, as well as unread messages. Those are all of the things that you need to know about the top section on the left hand side right here. Now, as we navigate across to the next section, we can see that there are some different buttons available to us. We have already covered the important button, but we can also select the done button here, which has the same effect as the move to done section here. We have got the mark as unread button. So we can select this message, which will then highlight and show up as unread so that we can respond to it later. One of the important things to remember is that sometimes if your Facebook page is open here in the inbox section, the message may automatically get marked as read, even if you haven't seen the message or responded to it. So marking it as unread is, is sometimes very important. We also have the mark as follow up button here, which is also available just underneath the mark is done section and we can just select the markers follow up button right there or up here and if we select that right now for this one it will then show up with our follow up section right over here and let's select that right now so you can then see hey here it is right here we need to follow this one up now if a message is showing up and it's not something that you're interested in, it's a spam based message, you can always flag it to the spam box. And as we come down to the bottom section here, you can see that when you are replying to a message here in the Meta Business Suite, there are a couple of different buttons and icons that come up. You can immediately send someone a like, which is a positive affirmation, which if you like their message, you can show that to them. So in this example, let's send the person a like, and there you go. There's an instant like button. And if we look at the button next to it, if you run an e-commerce or online ordering based business, you can then create an order for a particular person. In this example, we're not going to do that because we don't offer that service. You can also create an appointment with the person 
if you wish to take things further and have a discussion about something that they may be interested in for your product or service. And you can select that by frequency and the start and end time, as well as different notes that are available. And if you are someone that is doing lead generation through Messenger, this tool can be very important, particularly for closing cold leads and turning them into warm leads. Exiting out of that, we have got the poster sticker, and this allows you to select from the various stickers based on moods. And what that will then do, if we sh select an example here, you can see that it will post up over here based on the sticker which you select. You can also insert um, a file from your computer. You just click on the attach a file and that will then allow you to share a document, an image or even a small video that will show up in the response. And of course there is requesting feedback which right here it will show up an automatic request feedback and this will allow them to rate their experience uh, with you. But if we come back to the insert saved reply, this one can be quite good, especially if you um, get the same questions asked about your business over and over again, and you want to create a quick response. So let's select add new, and let's say, um, thank you for your interest. Here is a breakdown of the services our business offers. And let's say the shortcut for this one will be services. And then we can select the save button so that when we want to add in a quick response, we can just select the response we want to put in. And there you will see at the bottom of the response area, thank you for your interest. Here's a breakdown of the services our business offers, and then you can select send. It's a great tool, particularly if you are someone who is working as a marketer or a small business owner and wants to free up some extra time so that you're not sending the same response over and over again. Now, we have also got the opportunities um, for the settings to select the mode in which our messaging appears. So there's the default, there's the content, condensed version, there's the spacious version, and as you can see, that's changing in spacing as I'm applying these settings. And there's also the compact one as well. Obviously here, the default one seems to work just fine. So we will go with that. You can also create um, your availability on whether you are here or away. And let's say in this one, you are going to be away. And what this will then do is it will change the status on when you're going to be away until. And any messages uh, will be sent, um, will automatically say we will be away until this time, which brings up the next point in this tutorial, which is you can edit the away message and schedule to your liking. So let's go there right now and let's show you how to create a messaging automation. We just want to scroll on down until we see the away message right here. And then we want to go to the edit section and this will then allow us to choose who gets the away message, whether it's just for Messenger, our Facebook page, or Instagram. Let's select both. You can then select um, the hours that you're away each week and when exactly all of these things happen. So you can choose the start time and the end time for when you will be away on each particular day. And this will then show up here in the gray section as to when you will be away whilst the green section will be when you are here and available to respond to messages. And finally, there's obviously the message itself. And you can just enter in the message 
that you want to display when you are not available to respond to the messages. I would recommend that you choose the times that you are available to respond to messages and the days. And also I've mentioned that because it's been received outside of office hours, they will be getting a response to their message when you are back at the office. And once you've done that, you just select Save Changes. And just like that, it will then start showing when you are not available to respond to the different messages. Now, it is important to remember that there are also other messages that you can send to people, such as the instant reply. And if you want to turn it off at any time, just select the blue button here and click on it until it turns to gray. So then that automated instant reply will no longer be shown to people. If you wanted to turn it back on at any time, just click on the gray button until it appears as a blue button again. And there you have it, a quick look at all the great tools and features available in the inbox section of the Meta Business Suite. In our previous Meta Business Suite videos, we showed you not only how to access the inbox section, but how to use all the tools and features available to you within this platform. Today, we're changing focus a little bit, showing you how to set up your very first ad here in the Meta Business Suite. Okay, so here we are in the homepage of the Meta Business Suite. And the first thing that you wanna do is look for that Create Ad button. It's up at the top of the Meta Business Suite homepage next to the Create a Post. Once you have clicked on it, you will have a number of different goal objectives that you can choose from when creating your ad. There are a lot of different options and the simplest way to look at it is to identify first what your ultimate goal is with advertising on the platform. Are you looking to get more awareness, in which case promoting your page or getting more website visitors might be the best option? Or are you looking to go down straight to the meat and potatoes? Do you wanna get more purchases or more leads? In this example today, I wanna to get more leads. So let's click on the get more leads option and move forward from there. The first option that you will have is you need to identify where do you want to collect the information. In this example, let's say we want to collect it on Facebook. Simply hover your mouse over the on Facebook section and give it a click. Excellent. Now what you can see is that there are a lot of different things that have just appeared out of nowhere. The first thing is the contact form which we are going to use. Simply hover your mouse over create new form and this is then going to bring up the opportunity for you to create a form to collect information from potential customers who are starting out as leads. Give the form a appropriate name so that it is easy to identify. We then want to look at what sort of information is going to be important to us as a business owner and marketer looking to get more leads. So right now you can see in the preview section here, the form has got the full name and the email address. I think adding the phone number, job title, company name is going to be essential to getting the right information so that we can decide whether or not the person who has filled in the form is going to be a good match. One thing you can do too is with your short answer questions, identify a particular question that can effectively filter out a person's suitability as a customer. So in this example, Let's ask the question, how much do you spend on paid ads every month? And this will allow me to see whether this person is indeed a good prospect or whether it is a person who is probably better off going and working with someone else or learning how to run the ads themselves. Now you can see that short answer question has come up right at the start of the form. And once that's been done, we have got the next part, which is where they fill in their information. And after that, you've got the privacy policy. And of course, thanks, you're all set. So let's go down to the next section and click on next. Now the really cool part starts here. 
This is actually setting up the ad itself to generate more leads. So let's start with the description, which is the ad copy you will see at the top of the ad above the image or above the video, which is um, next under the media section. Now you can just see here, I have quickly added some new text into the description section, and that is now showing up above the image. Once you are happy with that, you can move on to the next section for the media. Now, there are a couple of different things to remember here. You can select multiple media, which will then show up as a multi-image carousel ad, or if you just want a single uh, image or video, you can just select edit options, and then you can select choose image. This will then allow you to identify the image which you may have uploaded uh, into your media library. Or if you are not happy with any of those, you can always select upload here and you can find the right image which is going to suit your purpose in the ad. So let's select this one. And here you go. This is what the ad is now going to look like. And you can see we have got a great opening description or ad copy up at the top. We've got a nice image that we have swapped out with. And we also just want to find a nice headline, which is no longer than 25 characters, including spacing and punctuation. So let's go for something that is nice and simple. Paid advertising help, fantastic. We go down to the next section, which is the call to action button. In the Meta Business Suite, this is called the button label, but don't be put off by that. It's the call to action. If you want to change it, simply select the drop down button next to the button label and change it to whatever is most suitable for you. Let's select get quote here. We want to ignore the advantage plus creative in here because it is going to confuse a lot of people, particularly those that are new. Just leave it turned off for now. Ignore the special ad category if you are just wanting to get more leads and your business is not related to any of these industries. And that brings us down to the audience section. What you want to do, if you don't see anything here, is scroll all the way down to the bottom and select Create New. This will then allow you to create a new audience here in the Meta Business Suite and target the people who have interests and are of a certain age that might fit into your target or ideal customer. So in this example, I'm wanting to go after established business owners who are over the ages of 32 and I've just held my mouse down and pulled this <coughs> across to the point where I am happy. I want to target people who are based throughout New Zealand, so I'm going to enter New Zealand as the target location. And that is then going to highlight the country and area which you are doing business in and wanting to target. If we scroll down to the next section, we can now begin to narrow down our target audience based on behavior, job titles, or interests. So let's go after small business owners and select that one. And you can always click on the browse button if you need some suggestions for finding the right targeting. We can see now that the target audience size is suitable between 65 and 75,000 people. And all we need to do here is select save. Now that that's done, we want to come down to the next section, which is the schedule and duration. Now here, it is great to select an initial trial period, which is about 10 days and spend about $5 a day over that period. So you can see whether or not the ad is effective and reaching your right target audience. And important to note here that you can adjust the start time simply by clicking on the calendar icon 
and also the time icons here. You can also adjust the time period in which your ad runs up and down over here on the right hand side with the up and down arrows and you can also choose the end date as well if you want to run it for a longer period of time. Now we come down to the other fun part which is the placements. This allows you to choose where your ads show up, Facebook, Instagram or Messenger. Let's say in this example we only want it to show up on Facebook and Instagram. So let's uncheck Messenger simply by clicking on it. If you want to re-add it in at a later point, you can always click on Messenger and the icon with a tick will reappear. Finally, you just want to add in your payment method. You can use PayPal, credit card, or one of the other options available. And once all of that has been done, we can have a quick preview look at what our ad will look like. And there's something that's equally important to know which is that as soon as someone clicks on the get quote um, call to action button there that is when the form which I showed you earlier on is going to pop out and appear so just remember that they're not going to the website here you're getting the information here on Facebook and with all of that out the way let's now push the promote now button and congratulations your ad has now been published so that's all there is to it in order to set up your very first ad here in the Meta Business Suite. And in today's video, we are going to show you how to navigate and use the Insights section of the Meta Business Suite. In order to access the Insights section, we first need to navigate over to the left hand menu bar here in the Meta Business Suite. This is then going to bring you to the overview section of the insights here in the Meta Business Suite. Let's show you all of the things that are included here. Number one is the overview period in which the insights are showing for. You can see up at the top here, this is for the last 28 days. We can see firstly, there is the reach which we have managed to achieve from Facebook and Instagram, as well as the overall paid reach. You can see there are ways to help you grow your reach, which is through uh, creating a post, or you could try reaching more people with an ad. And this segues quite nicely into the next section, which is the audience size for your Facebook and Instagram accounts. And this is quite useful and insightful because it allows you to create customized content not only with ad copy, but also with images and videos that can speak to this target audience. Scrolling down to the bottom part, you can see that there are updates on messaging uh, performance from the Facebook and Instagram accounts. And if you want to see at any time what accounts you have connected uh, to the Insights section, you can always select the drop down button right up at the top here underneath the ad account or the Facebook, Instagram pages and see for yourself what insights you have. Now, if we go to the menu bar on the left-hand section here and click on results, we will then be able to see um, what we have achieved for the overall reach for our pages, the page and profile visits to our Facebook and Instagram uh, profiles, the number of new likes and follows that we have managed to achieve in the set period of time that we are getting the insights for, as well as the different ad trends uh, based on paid reach, how many people that we have reached in this period of time, and how much money we have spent in order to reach those people. Now you can see here that there are some insights that were available on the homepage for followers, but you can also see the places towns and cities in which you have the largest following. And if we go up to the audience section, there's not just the current audience, there's also the potential audience section. And this can be something quite useful if you want to build and grow your following on platforms. And you can create an ad for that. And what you can also do is have a look at 
the types of interests which people have that are following you at the moment. Now, if we come back to content and have a look at the overview section, this will allow you to see just how effective your posts and content has been in reaching people. It has got a breakdown for posts, stories for Facebook, and posts and stories for Instagram. And now if we come down to the content section just underneath the overview, this is one of the most interesting tools that we have available. Go until we see the insight section and then click on it. And the reason for that is because this section offers direct insights into the overall post engagement for the recent organic and paid posts in the set period of time which you have your insights set for. If we scroll across, you can see the total reach, the number of link clicks, comments, shares, results, cost per result, and replies to message based posts. Next, we come to the messaging section here in Insights. And this allows you to see the number of messaging conversations started. If you are running a campaign built around sales and orders, how much revenue has been made from that and the number of orders, as well as your responsiveness to responding to messages. And as we come to the video section, I wanted to talk primarily about retention as that is the most important feature here in the insights section for video. This allows you to see for your set period of time where your views are coming from, whether it's recommendations, followers, shares, how long people are watching the video for, and a breakdown in a bar chart of what that looks like, as well as the average amount of time people spend watching your video. And of course, there's a little bonus section too into the earnings that you can make from your videos. Now, there is a requirement here for you to be uh, eligible for monetization on Facebook before this happens. And if you want to know what these criteria are, I'll include a link in the description box below as to what you need to do in order to make money from Facebook on your video content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. Once again, if you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing if you are new to the channel and want ongoing Facebook and Instagram marketing tutorials and tips. We post new videos every single week. And if you have any questions about the content that was covered in today's video, you can always leave a comment down below and I'll aim to answer your questions as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial video. Bye for now.